So, Catherine, I think one of the things that most worries people who know that they've got a terminal illness and their families too is actually what happens, what, what is the process of dying like? Yeah, I, I think you're right. It's a thing that a lot of people worry about and imagine and take references from TV and cinema, which of course is all very dramatic and scary. Um, and one of the things I've found really useful over the years I've been working in palliative care has been to describe to people what it is that we see when we're around the bedside of a person at the very end of their life. And what is that? Yeah, so one of the things that people will notice way back before we're at that bedside is that they're just more tired than they used to be. And that gradually, over time, they're noticing that they're more weary and that they need to recharge more often. And we recharge by sleeping. Sleeping becomes as important, really, as eating and drinking at that stage in an illness. And gradually, as time goes by, people find that even a really good snooze doesn't give them very much energy for very long. So people are awake for short periods and then asleep for increasingly long periods. So that's not uncomfortable, it's not a, not a real problem, it's just sometimes not terribly exciting, really. And as time goes by, people are more tired, they perhaps save their energy for really special things grandchildren coming to visit or a really important conversation that they want to have. And a time will come eventually where we'll notice that actually during those periods of sleeping we can't wake that person up, maybe it's medicine time or a visitor they specially wanted to see, and they're too deeply asleep to wake up, they're not actually just asleep, they're unconscious, they're in a coma for just a short period of time and then they wake up again and tell us they've had a nice sleep so we know that that unconsciousness doesn't feel unpleasant for people. So around that time we will start to think about what drugs is this person taking that are making sure that they're comfortable, perhaps they're taking painkillers or treatment for breathlessness or nausea. So we'll find a different way of giving those drugs then so that the person will remain comfortable even if they're unconscious for periods and not able to, to take their medicines. So we'll find that, that people are coming in and out of consciousness for shorter and shorter periods of time, but still with their usual sense of humour and still enjoying seeing the people that they love and not starting to enjoy the company of people that they didn't enjoy before. You know, it's still, it's still us in there. And towards the very end of somebody's life, what we'll see is that they are unconscious almost all of the time and eventually totally unconscious all of the time. So because we can see that coming, because it's a gradual change over time, you can make sure that the right people are there, that there's time to send for family who are close by. You might need to notice those energy levels dropping a few days before if family have got to come from some great distance but you can generally make sure that the right people are around that person to support them at the very end of their life. And what they'll see if they're around the bed is just somebody who is breathing very gently and occasionally the breathing rhythm changes. Sometimes it gets a bit loud and snorry. Sometimes it gets very gentle and panty. And there are reasons that that's happening as what happens inside our brains as the brain is starting to shut down changes breathing patterns. And so at the very, very end of somebody's life, all their family will see is that they just very gently stop breathing. So no sudden pain at the end or feeling of fading away or panickiness or anything like that. They're not going to see something that's frightening to them. A lot of people are told or read that don't worry about dying because you'll be asleep. Is that, is that right? That's a bit scary, isn't it? I mean, I think if somebody told me I would, don't, you know, don't worry, you'll be asleep when you die, I would immediately try not to go to sleep. And I meet a lot of people who have immediately decided not to go to sleep because they've either misunderstood or been given bad information. Becoming unconscious doesn't feel like going to sleep it comes upon us without us noticing. 
So if they're still at the phase in their illness that they're well enough to feel tired enough to need a sleep, then they're well enough to wake up again at the other end of that sleep. And they really should you know, take that sleep, relish that sleep, use it to recharge their batteries and plan the next thing to look forward to on the other side of that sleep. Some people though do say that they hear things that frighten them at someone's death bed, like uh, rattling, breathing and things, and that they found it quite difficult. So not all deaths are quite as peaceful as, as you describe? Well, that, that's a really, really interesting question. There's, there's a thing that's called, it's known the, as the death rattle. Now, what's actually happening then is normally when you're awake, or even in fact if you're just in an ordinary sleep, if you get a little bit of phlegm or a little bit of saliva in the back of your throat, your throat will feel it and your brain will manage it by making you swallow. So we keep the back of our throat clear all the time. If you're so deeply relaxed and unconscious that you no longer notice that there's bits of phlegm and saliva lying at the back of your throat, then as you're breathing in and out, that breath will bubble through the liquid and it'll make a rattly noise. Now actually on one level, that tells me as the person's doctor that they're deeply, deeply unconscious, they're not aware of the sensation in their throat at all, or they would cough or swallow to clear those things. But because it's an odd noise, families are disturbed by it, and they you know, are worried that in fact it's somebody trying to speak or express pain or distress through a throat that's probably not working very well anymore. So it's really, really important that we can reassure them that actually this is a sign that somebody's very deeply unconscious. In fact, there are some places that will offer to use drugs to dry up the patient's saliva so that they don't make that noise anymore. But it, that's an interesting dilemma, really, whether you use a drug to take away a problem for the family rather than for the person. But m many patients would like to think that would help their families to be comfortable at that time. So we have to explain to the families and then work out what's the right thing to do for each individual person. So if there was one simple message that you could give to people who know that death is not very far away but are frightened that it will be painful or that they'll feel sick or that they'll kind of lose the plot and not be able to, what, what would you say to them? I think I would like people really to understand that death is, the process of dying is something that we recognise, that we understand the sequence of and that we can walk alongside them to make sure that their symptoms are well managed as they gradually lose awareness of the world around them and they're breathing them very slowly fades and stops.